bitch. Stick. Hi everyone, Redman Jenkins here. As you may have heard, there's a little bit of bigotry in this game. I couldn't really decide whether it was one of those things where I just cut up the bigotry so you could understand it, or uh, do a let's learn with how long it was, and I decided to just split the difference. So there's a little bit of bad language. I don't really like typing out uh, at the end of this, but we'll live with it for now. Uh, but today I wanted to talk to you about the Burr Conspiracy. Now, it's uh, one of those things you don't really hear a lot about. Most people hear Aaron Burr and they immediately assume, oh, the guy who started the Grand New Jersey tradition of shooting somebody else with a handgun. Uh, and that's only partly true. Of course, uh, Hamilton, uh, Alexander Hamilton, former tr uh, Secretary of the Treasury, was shot by Aaron Burr in 1804. But Burr had much grander plans for much larger guns. Uh, in about 1804, really, Burr had begun contacting people across the country from different walks of life, uh, mostly diplomatic, military, and business, uh, as well as farmers, to form a bit of a consortium. Now, uh, this group of people were people who may have been attracted to Burr's ideas for a variety of reasons. Burr had actually purchased or gained a lease from the Spanish government for about 80 square miles of property out in the Texas area. And with this, he had proposed going down the Mississippi River and uh, starting up a different country, different society, uh, really maybe even a different state. Who knows? It's actually a murky issue. Uh, there's not really anything sure. And much of it's really been lost to the, uh, the idea of making uh, Burr a villain, or at least a bigger villain than he is in American history. Uh, Burr had several contacts that made and several uh, well-kept and uh, well-archived uh, correspondences that really made it seem like he was trying to completely secede from the Union or maybe, maybe even cause a new American Revolution. And this is kind of called into question because he was trying to get support from governments to get money and supplies that could have been used to protect a colony, or it could have been used to actually overthrow the government. But here are the facts. In about 1804, Burr had begun contact with a Spanish ambassador in Mexico about getting funding to overthrow the U.S. government. Uh, he had also at this time purchased the land in Spanish-held territory, or purchased the lease to the land in Spanish-held territory. He had also, by this point, had per, uh, persuaded Thomas Jefferson, the man who he was serving as vice president to, to appoint James Wilkinson, who was a former Revolutionary War general, who was a current general in the U.S. Army, who had tried to secede from the Union in Tennessee and Kentucky in the eight, uh, 1780s. Uh, he had been appointed to the governorship of New Orleans, or Louisiana, actually, and uh, he also had a bit of secessionist bent, but the belief is that Wilkinson would have gone on to be the commander-in-chief in whatever nation Burr had set up, and possibly have led the army if uh, there was a secession. So he, uh, Burr had also had contact with the British government through an ambassador there, and uh, the British government had no interest, just as the Spanish government had no real interest, in supporting Burr or any sort of dismantling of the United States. So, with this lack of support, when Burr went off and shot Hamilton for insulting his ride, uh, or whatever it was, uh, Burr had to really make some quick choices. And this is when he started to uh, associate with a man named Harum uh, Bellinsara, Bellin Harris, and he was an Irishman who had a large estate and uh, a mansion out on a river named after him, uh, or a uh, or an island named after him in the Ohio River uh, in what's now West Virginia. And from here, Burr was able to kind of uh, get his game together, as it were, to organize the people who were going to go with him down the Mississippi to the territory he purchased. Uh, these included farmers, soldiers, uh, really people from all walks of life, uh, the people you'd need to really set up a, a successful, self-sustaining colony and defend it. So, Burr was about to travel down the river when the governor of Ohio actually raided the island 
and Burr had to go with a much smaller force. Uh, Burr going down the river wasn't really successful. He was eventually apprehended and tried in West Virginia. Uh, he would actually be defended by a young man who would go on to be a, uh, a small legend in the United States House of Representatives, uh, Henry Clay, who was at that time a young lawyer. Uh, and he was actually successful in uh, keeping Burr out of jail in this case. Burr was accused of uh, treason and high misdemeanor for, uh, well, one, possibly trying to overthrow the government, and two, uh, because he had tried to involve other countries in it and take their territory uh, if he seceded. Uh, because, of course, the areas he was going into were not actually owned by the United States. Now, this has raised a lot of questions, as I mentioned earlier, over what Burr's actual intentions were. And while they range from anything from trying to stage a revolution against the Spanish in Mexico uh, to staging a revolution at home, uh, all the way to actually just establishing a new colony or a competing nation on the same continent as the United States, it's never been really clear because of the way he's been uh, pictured through the history and through the way he uh, conducted his business trying to get this set up. Uh, what was really the turning point in getting him convicted and brought to trial was James Wilkinson, the uh, former army general and governor of Louisiana, turning on him and providing uh, Thomas Jefferson with documentation showing that Burr planned to secede from the Union or completely leave it, if not establish a competing nation and possibly overthrowing the government. Now, how much of that's actually accurate, who knows, if Wilkinson forged parts of the letter, it's questionable. There's a lot about this that is questionable. Uh, but Wilkinson would go on to be tried uh, by Congress twice in, in preceding years and die penniless like Burr would after he fled the country at the conclusion of this trial. Uh, Burr would go to Europe trying to rally support in England and then France for his return to the United States and his attempt to overthrow the government. Uh, now he, he obviously wanted to. So, this trial also brought up a very interesting point uh, I hadn't really thought about for a while that I think people are going to find very interesting, uh, especially now, and that is the idea of executive privilege. This is possibly one of the earliest and best examples of executive privilege being used by a president. And in this case, Thomas Jefferson uh, refused to uh, provide documents uh, requested in a subpoena uh, while trying to charge Aaron Burr. Uh, if these documents would have helped or hurt Burr's case is anyone's guess, uh, or it would have shown there was some sort of U.S. government complicity and it may have been uh, an attempt to overthrow Spanish and Mexico. Who knows? Uh, the last one, of course, is a bit conspiracy-minded, uh, conspiracy but hey, that's the place for it. So, uh, Jefferson really set precedent in this one by saying that, in his view, the executive had choices whether or whether not to turn over documents requested, and if the documents were actually pertaining to the issue at hand. Uh, this would, of course, be going on to use by almost every president since then, uh, but most notably by Richard Nixon, George Bush, and President Obama, uh, relating to Vietnam and the White House tapes, the Iraq War and uh, drone issues over uh, drone use over Pakistan and the war in Afghanistan, uh, respectively, of course. So with his career ended, Burr fled to Europe, Wilkinson really uh, just didn't do anything, and the Irishman who helped them uh, kind of went back to Ireland and then eventually came back to the U.S., became a lawyer. But the Burr Conspiracy stands as a really interesting early American attempt to separate from the country. And while there have been other attempts since then, and attempts of course before it with Wilkinson especially, uh, this one kind of gets forgotten. Uh, of course the Civil War gets brought up more, but this wasn't an issue uh, of states' rights or slavery or anything like that. This was a, a single man and a few like-minded compatriots trying to leave a country. And it shows us just how far the U.S. came between then and 1860, where it took a shadow government to really do this. I'm Roman Jenkins. Bye. Air baggage on the way. Losing sea. We lost.
Charlie. Enemy UAV spotted. Nice work, Delta. Well done. Yeah, that was a nice. What are you doing for? How much more of a faggot could you do? What the fuck is your name? Redog? Red Dog? Redog? Y'all pop like a faggot. When you talk shit and you back out like a pussy. Not you, I was talking to that redog. Fuck that faggot. You the bitch. Oh man, we're not fucking bros. Shut the fuck up. Yo, bro. Yo, man, we're not fucking bros, man. I like that shit. Uh, I want to be a fucking stepdad. Yeah, I want to be a stepdad. You're a stepdad. Your hate, your hate, back up. <laughs>